Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan. While many different characters have taken up the identity of Robin, Damian Wayne was one of the most mysterious characters to ever assume this role. Created by Mike W. Barr and Jerry Bingham, Damian was the biological son of Batman, and he was first introduced in the Batman Son of the Demon comic series. While his character was known for his aggressive nature and violent tendencies, Damian stepped up to become the fifth Robin and worked alongside Dick Grayson's Batman. Today, we will explore his character in detail and let you know everything there is to know about Damian Wayne. But before I go into our explanation, however, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. No swords. Fine. Batman, Son of the Demon, presented a tragic backstory to Damian Wayne. While the comic series was not considered canon for a long period, Damon was first introduced in the Batman Son of the Demon comics in 1987. The story begins with a hostage situation at a chemical plant, wherein Batman is summoned by the Gotham City PD to defuse the situation. While he manages to rescue the hostages, Batman gets badly injured while fighting the criminals who are trying to steal the chemicals from the plant. As he returns to the Batcave, he falls unconscious and is rescued by Talia al Ghul, who takes him to the Batcave. As the story progresses, Batman and Talia work together to figure out who is responsible for stealing the chemicals. They eventually trace the crime to a terrorist named Can, and Batman soon visits his friend, Dr. Blaine, to look into the chemicals. However, he discovers that Dr. Blaine has been brutally murdered, and he concludes that he was killed by Ra's al Ghul, one of his most fierce adversaries, and Talia's father. Batman and Talia go to Ra's base of operations together, where they discover that he is still alive and is working on restoring a Lazarus pit. This pit was a pool of liquid that could revive a person, heal injuries, and even grant immortality to the one who bathes in it. When Batman finally faces Roz, the villain tells him that he played no role in Blaine's death and that he only briefly worked with Kane. Batman also learns that Kane is responsible for killing Melisande, Talia's mother, and Ra's wife. He then asks Ra's to join forces with him in order to defeat Kane, and Ra's agrees only on the condition that Batman must marry Talia. The two of them had already been wed by Ra's, so they finally consummate their marriage, and Batman soon becomes a proper member of the family. In the meantime, Kane teams up with a rogue government officer, General Yossid, and they work together to steal a satellite from the US government. Kayan finally prepares for his plan to launch a satellite into space, but Batman and Talia soon show up with a plan to place a bomb on the satellite. However, things go downhill when Kayan gets wind of their strategy and disables the bomb before the satellite's launch. When Talia and Batman return to Ra's base, she tells him that she's pregnant with his child. While Batman is upset due to their failed mission, he soon forgets all about it as he only starts thinking about his child. In the meantime, Kayan also learns about this child, as he had captured one of Ra's henchmen back at the military base. He decides to attack Ra's base, and Batman becomes quite protective of Talia and ensures that she and the child are safe. Kayan discovers the Lazarus Pit and decides to bathe in it to cure his disease, but Ra's destroys the pit with explosives before he can do so. Eventually, Kayan decides to retreat his forces and return to his base, where he soon learns that his satellite is finally in orbit. He he takes control of the satellite and manipulates it to cause large-scale destruction near the Soviet Union, and we learn that his ultimate plan was to stir up a war between the US and Russia. Back at Ra's base, Talia's father tries to come up with a new plan to defeat Kayan, and even insists that they should get her to a safe place before they make any further plans. In an unfortunate turn of events, Talia falls unconscious and later reveals that she's lost the baby. Batman blames the exertion due to Kayan's attack for the miscarriage, and he joins forces with Roz to defeat Kayan. After successfully killing him, Batman returns to Talia, who expresses her desire to stay alone. She states that their relationship can't remain the same, and Batman respects her decision and heads out to find Dr. Blaine's killer. After solving the case, Batman spends an entire night on the rooftop and mourns the loss of his unborn child. As the comic ends, it is shockingly revealed that Talia gave birth to a baby boy and then gave him away to an orphanage. The child holds the necklace that Batman had once given to Talia after learning that she was pregnant, and a couple soon adopts the baby and promises to take care of him. We learn that Talia wanted Batman to help her father to fight against Kan and that she had lied about losing the child to ensure that Batman did not step down from the fight. 
Damian Wayne was reintroduced in the comic book story arc. Damian later appeared in Batman Comics in 2006, and comic writer Grant Morrison built up Damian's story arc from the previous comic to reintroduce this character in the DC Universe. While Batman works alongside Commissioner Gordon to deal with the menace of the Joker, Talia al Ghul shows up in Gotham City with her son. She works alongside the team of assassins a secret organization founded by Raz al Ghul. Talia meets with Kirk Langstrom, a scientist that invented a serum that could turn him into a man-bat whenever he wanted. She asks him to hand him the man-bat serum and even kidnaps his wife, Francine, along with the help of the League of Assassins, so that he keeps his promise and delivers the serum. Talia even injects Francine with the Neurobasilis serum that would cripple her if she doesn't get an antidote in 24 hours. Kirk ends up running into Bruce Wayne at a fundraiser, but he soon excuses himself so that he can deliver the serum. As the story progresses, Alfred talks to Batman and even comments on how it's been a while since he has ended up on any gossip columns. He also trains Bruce on keeping his posture at any social event, and Bruce soon attends a gala fundraiser in a museum. While Bruce attends the fundraiser, Talia appears with her child and observes the gala from a huge monitor. She asks asks her child to follow the mannerisms of the guests and then recognize his father, and the child accurately points to Bruce Wayne and addresses him as his father. He then asks his mother about their next step, and Talia declares that it's time to say hello. As the comic comes to an end, we learn that Talia has managed to get an army of Man-Bat commandos by using the Man-Bat serum, and that she is prepared to face Batman once again. In the next issue, titled Man-Bats of London, Bruce socializes with people at the gala, and even makes acquaintances with the African princess, Jezebel Jett. He also flirts with her, and the two eventually decide to meet again after the fundraiser. In the meantime, Alfred Pennyworth waits outside the gala venue when we see Kirk Langstrom being thrown out of a minivan. Upon closer look, he spots Kirk's wife, Francine, along with him, and he decides to approach them. Kirk tells Alfred all about Talia and the League of Assassins, and how he had no option but to hand them the bat serum. While Kirk warns Alfred about the impending danger, Alfred rushes inside the gala with a suitcase that contains the bat suit. He swiftly throws the suitcase towards Bruce, who turns into Batman right when Talia releases the Man Bat Commandos inside the gala venue. The Man Bat then starts killing the guards at the venue when Batman shows up and they even try to kidnap the Prime Minister's wife. However, Batman single-handedly gets rid of six of the Man-Bats and saves her. Eventually, Talia releases a lot of Man-Bats, and they keep arriving at the venue while Alfred escorts the African princess, Jezebel Jett, and gets her to safety. In the meantime, Batman uses his supersonic powers to take out 30 of the Man-Bats at once and gets overwhelmed as he falls to the ground. He finds himself tied up next to the Prime Minister's wife in an underground basement when he finally regains consciousness. He realizes that the Man-Bats are holding him up when Talia finally approaches him and introduces herself once again. She tells him that her father has died, and she has finally taken over the family business. Talia then asks Bruce if he remembers the night they had spent under the desert moon, and he replies by saying that he only remembers being drugged and used as part of an experiment after refusing to willingly partake in it. Talia responds by saying that they had chosen him as the perfect man to produce an heir for Ra's al Ghul's empire and that he played his part perfectly, despite having been drugged that night. Talia had then grown Damien in an artificial womb, which ensured that the child grow up to be a perfect heir. She tells Bruce that she allowed him to avoid his responsibilities as a father after that night, and even ensured that their son got the training from the League of Assassins. After a brief conversation, she tells him that the boy is now growing beyond her control and lacks discipline and guidance. Talia further declares that she will return to the mountains to create a new army of man-bats, and that she intends to hold the world hostage with a new kind of terror. While Talia takes her leave, she tells Batman that she is leaving their son behind so that he can get acquainted with his father. As the comic ends, Damian Wayne finally appears in front of Batman and even holds a sword to his neck as he states that he imagined his father would be taller. It is also mentioned that Damien had been curious about his father for quite a long time, and that Talia had promised to tell him everything about him after he proved himself worthy by defeating her in combat. Damien tries to beat his mother for many years, and he eventually succeeds on his 10th birthday. Talia then orchestrates a plan to take him to Batman, and finally introduces Damien to his father. In the next comic issue, Batman arrives at the Batcave with Damien, and shows him around his new home. He also asks the boy about his training with the League of Assassins, and assures him that they will work together to put the training to good use to fight crime. Damien then curiously explores the Batcave and comes across the Batmobile, while Batman tries to get to know his son better and asks him questions about his childhood. However, Damien avoids these questions by stating that his mother was not really there for him, as she was busy running her father's criminal empire, and he then challenges his father to a fight. While Batman tells him to stop being ridiculous, 
Damien insists on fighting him and shows him his training while Tim Drake's Robin makes an appearance. Batman introduces Damien to Robin, while the young child tells the boy wonder to stop patronizing him, or else he will break his face. In the meantime, Batman asks Alfred's assistance in unpacking Damien's clothes and showing him his temporary quarters. While Damien curses out loud and declares that his mother let him do whatever he wanted, Batman states that things are different here and sends him away with Alfred. As they take their leave, Batman updates Robin on the current situation and tells him that Talia has taken the Prime Minister's wife hostage and she intends to make an army of man-bats. While Robin has his doubts about Damien, Batman declares that his son was raised by international terrorists who wanted to use him as a weapon and that he deserves love and respect. Robin believes that Damien should have to earn Batman's respect just like everyone else, but he soon changes the topic and tells Batman about the spook and how he is holding the mayor hostage at the Blackgate prison. While Batman heads out to deal with the spook, Damien throws a tantrum over having to stay at the Wayne Manor and even asks for a laptop and better food. Batman finally scolds and reprimands him for his actions giving him a valuable lesson on patience before heading out to Blackgate Prison. Batman teams up with Commissioner Gordon to deal with the spook and find the mayor, and one of Gordon's undercover cops leads them to the spook. As they reach the base, they find the mayor safe and sound, but are shocked to find Spook's dead body with a missing head. As the scene shifts to the Batcave, Robin searches for Alfred, but ends up running into Damien, who is trying to train with a new sword. Robin tells him that he doesn't have to train on his own and even offers to spar with him. While Robin tries to befriend the young guy after getting off to a bad start, Damien doesn't really pay him much attention and focuses instead on his training. Robin finally notices the extravagant sword in his hand and asks him if Alfred had gave him that sword. Damien states that he managed to get the sword from the Batcave's cavern after discovering the combination by deciphering Alfred's handprints from his keypad. However, he seems distressed that the Batcave exit is sealed with voice-activated locks and even comments on how it is much more difficult to exit the place. After listening to him talk, Robin suggests that they train and even promises to go easy on Damien. However, the young kid makes fun of him by imitating his voice and even states that the voice recognition software is not as innovative as they think. He then says that his dad challenged him to show him what he could do, so he decided to step out and fight crime. While Robin asks him what he did, Damien pulls the spook's head from his bag and declares that he won the fight against crime. Robin outrageously tells him that he cannot just kill anyone, as it is against their policy. But Damien retaliates by saying that the League of Assassins doesn't really show any mercy and kills anyone who gets in their way. Damien then changes into Robin's costume, while a bewildered Robin demands to know what he did to Alfred to get the keys to the suit. However, Damien ignores the question and lunges forward with his sword to attack Robin. The fight between the two stirs up the T-Rex in the Batcave, and Damien almost ends up getting caught between the animal's jaws when Robin intervenes and saves him. He then tries to talk some sense into Damien and even asks why he's doing all this, but the young kid replies that he intends to replace Robin and take his rightful place at Batman's side. He insists that Robin doesn't deserve any of this and then attacks him and pushes him off a ledge. In a different part of the city, Batman swings across the skyline and and runs into Damien, who is wearing a Robin costume. Robin asks him how he managed to get out of the Batcave, and he replies by saying that he's not the same stupid child, and he wants to help him. Damien further states that he can stand next to Batman in his fight against Talia, but the Dark Knight states that he already has a partner. He then asks Damien about Robin and what he did to him, and the young kid only replies by saying that the old Robin quit and that there is a new Robin now. As the issue comes to an end, we see Tim Drake's Robin has fallen to his death, while Damian Wayne has assumed the role of the Boy Wonder. In the next comic issue, Batman returns to the Batcave to find Tim Drake's dead body on the ground, while Damian defends his right to be Robin, as he is Batman's true son. While Alfred tries to bring Tim back to life, Batman reprimands Damian for breaking their no-kill policy, but he eventually includes Damian in a mission where he proves himself to be useful. While Damian firstly appears as Robin in the comic issue, he was officially introduced as Robin in the Batman and Robin comic series in June of 2009. He even took the mantle as Batman. Damian Wayne even appeared as an adult in the Batman comics in 2007, more specifically issue 666, wherein he took the mantle of Batman. After being unable to save Batman's life, Damian replaces his father as the new Batman and turns out to be a darker version of the vigilante. Damian doesn't hesitate to punish his opponents severely or even kill them, and he also sees Commissioner Barbara Gordon as a rival rather than a friend. Damien also carries a pet cat named Alfred, and this version of the character has a supernatural healing factor and various other supernatural powers. This comic series hints at a future possibility of Damien making a deal with the devil, wherein he gives up his soul in exchange for immortality. It's implied that he does this because he doesn't think of himself as competent as Bruce Wayne 
or even Dick Grayson's Batman, and that he strikes a deal with the devil to match their level and protect Gotham. As time passes, Damien sets many traps all over Gotham so that he can ensure the city's safety, but this action turns Gotham into a dangerous weapon in itself. In the future, Damien's Batman gets into a fight with Two-Face 2 and even rescues a young Terry McGinnis from his control. He then trains Terry to become the new Batman. Damien also appears as Batman in the Superman Batman comics, where he appears alongside the new Superman. Connor Kent. While Superman and Batman usually get along in most comic story arcs, Damien and Connor do not seem to get along with each other, since Connor disapproves of Damien's violent behavior. Son of Batman, the animated movie, explored more about this character. The Son of Batman animated movie was released in 2014, and it was based on the Batman and Son comic storyline. It begins at the League of Assassins headquarters, where Ra's al Ghul trains his grandson Damian Wayne to become his successor. While Ra's had initially intended for Slade Wilson to take his place, he changed his mind after Damian's birth. While the two train together, Slade Wilson attacks the headquarters and even kills Ra's. After her father's death, Talia decides to head to Gotham with Damian to introduce him to Bruce Wayne. While she leaves Damien with Bruce, Talia decides to go after Slade Wilson to avenge her father's death. While Batman gets acquainted with Damien, the young boy turns out to be quite independent and often tries to seek out and go after Slade. He once even attacks one of Slade's followers when Nightwing intervenes and brings him back to his father. Batman scolds Damien for his reckless actions and eventually decides to make him the new Robin so that he learns some discipline. In the meantime, Slade changes his name, becoming popularly known as Deathstroke and even captures Talia and a scientist named Kirk Langstrom. Commissioner Gordon finds out that Deathstroke has set up a base in an abandoned stadium and informs Batman about it. Batman and Damien then sneak into the stadium and even come across Dr. Langstrom, who refuses to share details about Deathstroke's plan as the villain had held his family hostage. Damien loses his cool and eventually attracts the attention of his enemies. Deathstroke sends an army of man-bats to attack Batman and Damien, while Dr. Langstrom tells them that Deathstroke plans to create an army of man-bats. After dealing with these creatures, Batman and Damien rescue Langstrom's family, while the scientist works with Nightwing to create an antidote for the man-bats. While Batman rescues Langstrom's family, he soon realizes that Talia must also have been kidnapped by Deathstroke, and Langstrom's daughter reveals Talia's location to him. In the meantime, Nightwing discovers that Deathstroke has set up his base on the Scottish coast, and Damien heads out on his own to rescue his mother. He even finds Talia and Deathstroke at his underwater base, and discovers that Deathstroke had managed to create an army of man-bats, and that he even has a Lazarus Pit. While Deathstroke had planned to sell the Lazarus Pit to someone, Damien shows up to the scene, and Deathstroke shoots a bullet at him. While Talia saves Damien from the gunshot by shielding him with her body, she, however, gets fatally wounded. Batman arrives at the scene along with Nightwing and Dr. Langstrom, who managed to find an antidote for the Man-Bats. While Batman takes Talia to the Lazarus Pit to heal her, Nightwing and Dr. Langstrom heal all the Man-Bats. While everyone else is occupied with something or the other, Damien ends up in a fight with Deathstroke and even manages to defeat him. However, he refuses to kill Deathstroke after realizing that his father would not do such a thing. In the meantime, the underwater base gets destroyed when the Man-Bats break the glass roof to escape and end up flooding the place. While Batman, Nightwing, Damien, and the others escape, they leave Deathstroke's unconscious body at the bottom of the ocean floor. After getting to safety, Batman suggests that Damien should stay with him and continue to be Robin. At the same time, Talia expresses her desire to rebuild the League of Assassins with their help. She eventually agrees to Damien's stay in Gotham with his father, but also declares that she will return for him someday in the future. As the movie comes to an end, we see that Damien and Nightwing end up in a fight with each other. After the release of Sons of Batman, DC released a sequel to the movie called Batman vs. Robin in 2015. The movie was based on the Court of Owls comics written by Scott Snyder, and it begins with Bruce Wayne learning all about the evil Court of Owl organization that works from within the city's shadows. After his parents' death, Bruce suspects that the court was involved in their death, but he doesn't have any evidence. As the story returns to the present day, Damien Wayne's Robin heads out on a mission to rescue a group of children that have been kidnapped by Anton Schott. It so happens that a mysterious figure kills Anton and leaves a feather behind, but Bruce doesn't believe Damien and blames him for Anton's death. He also places extra security around Wayne Manor to prevent Damien from stepping out again, and he then decides to head out to investigate the lone feather. Bruce ends up running into a group of assassins who capture him and take him to the court's headquarters, where the organization's leader, known as the Grand Master, asks Bruce to join them. While Bruce declines this offer, Damien breaks out of Wayne Manor and meets 
meets the Talon, an assassin who works for the Court of Owls. Damien starts training with the Talon to become a court assassin, but the Grandmaster refuses to let Damien join after learning that he's Batman's son. The Grandmaster also comes up with a plan to kill Damien in order to get back at Bruce, but the Talon defends Damien and even kills the Grandmaster. We learn that the Grandmaster's true identity was Samantha Van Aver, who was also Bruce's girlfriend at the time. After killing her, the Talon takes control of the Court of Owls and decides to attack Wayne Manor. In the meantime, Damien breaks out of the place and even defeats the Talon, who wants to take Damien under his control. After being defeated, the Talon forces Damien to stab him in the neck so that he can die, and this incident has a traumatizing effect on Damien. After Talon's death, Bruce tries to convince Damien to return to Wayne Manor, but he refuses to do so, since he believes he does not know who he is. While Damien decides to leave, Bruce suggests that he should take a break and go to a monastery in the Himalayas if he wishes to find himself. A sequel to this movie was released in 2016, and it was titled Batman Bad Blood. The movie was not based on a particular comic series, but was loose inspired by the character arcs that included the Leviathan and Talia al Ghul. The movie was set six months after the defeat of the Court of Owls, when Damian Wayne decided to head to the monastery in the Himalayas. Meanwhile, Batman faces a new troublemaker, named the Heretic in Gotham. As we know from the comics, the Heretic was a clone of Damian Wayne created by his mother, Talia al Ghul. While Batman faces the Heretic, he wonders why he reminds him so much of his son when the Heretic causes an explosion that allegedly kills Batman. While Alfred Pennyworth sends a distress call to Nightwing, Damian Wayne watches the news report about his father's disappearance and decides to return to Gotham. In the meantime, Batwoman tries to look for Batman, as she holds herself responsible for his disappearance. However, she soon finds out that Batman has resurfaced, and she visits him to find that Nightwing has returned to play the role of Batman. In the meantime, the Heretic's forces launch an attack on Wayne Enterprises, which prompts Damian and Nightwing to head to the scene and arrest him. However, the Heretic manages to escape without getting caught, and we soon learn that he's working for Talia al Ghul, who is also holding Bruce as a prisoner. The Heretic later breaks into the Batcave to kidnap Damien, and is finally revealed that the Heretic was created with the help of a genetic program that used Damien's DNA to create his clone. However, the Heretic also wished to have Damien's memories and personality, and he intended to kill Damien and take his brain for himself. Talia arrives at the scene, learns about the Heretic's plan, and soon kills him for defying her orders. In the meantime, Nightwing and Batwoman locate Talia's headquarters through a location tracker in Damien's suit and manage to rescue both Damien and Bruce. While Bruce recovers, the others realize that Talia had joined forces with the Mad Hatter to torture Bruce and that he is still under the effect of his mind control. Meanwhile, Luke Fox realizes that Talia and her League of Shadows intend to use Bruce to brainwash a group of leaders at a world summit, and they also head off to the summit to face Talia and her henchmen. The Mad Hatter dies during this fight, which finally breaks the mind control effect as Bruce returns to his usual state. When Talia realizes that she can no longer control Bruce, she tries to escape but ends up dying at the hands of one of the heretic's men. Bruce later consoles Damien about Talia's death, while Alfred comments about how she was still his mother despite all the madness. The Time When Damien Comes Back From The Dead Damien ended up dying in the Batman Incorporated series in an issue called The Boy Wonder Returns, issue number 8, wherein the Leviathans declared an attack on Gotham. While the situation worsens, Damien decides to head to Wayne Tower to help his allies in defeating Leviathan. He also runs into Nightwing, who reprimands Damien for showing up at such a dangerous scene. However, the young boy manages to convince Nightwing to let him fight by his side, and the two even recollect their time together as Batman and Robin. Damien, as Robin, calls Nightwing his favorite partner, and the two try to defeat the Leviathans together. In the meantime, the Heretic shows up at the scene and defeats Nightwing. The Heretic was essentially Damien's clone and was created by Damien's mother, Talia al Ghul, who wanted to replace Batman with her son. After Talia's plan had backfired, she resorted to creating a clone of Damien Wayne. In the present day, the Heretic challenges Robin to a fight and even states that the last one standing would be the rightful son of Talia al Ghul. Robin agrees to fight him and manages to keep Keep up with the heretic's attacks until the remaining leviathans start aiming arrows at him. Robin gives a good fight, but ends up dying during these attacks. In the meantime, Batman tries to escape from a safe where Talia al Ghul had cornered him, and he eventually arrives in the Wayne Tower's lobby to see his dead son on the floor. Batman rushes to Damien and picks up his body as he mourns his son's death. 
as they carry Damien's coffin and bury him in the graveyard. Batman talks about how Damien was raised to inherit a criminal empire, and yet he chose his own rightful path. He also comments on how Damien decided to be Robin until the very end, and then promises to avenge his death. Eventually, Darkseid sends one of his henchmen, Glorious Godfrey, to bring Damien's body to Apocalypse. Batman heads to Apocalypse himself to bring his child back to life, and ends up getting into a fight with Darkseid himself. The Bat family also accompanies him, and they eventually bring Damien's body back to the Bat Cave. Batman then uses the Chaos Shard to heal his son and bring him back to life. Besides surviving him, the Magic Shard also gives him new powers for a short period. Guess you missed the announcement, Joker. There's a new Robin in town, too. Damian Wayne has a very different story arc in the animated series universe. Damian's origin story in the animated series greatly differed from his story arc in the comics. He appeared in the animated series Batman Brave and the Bold in an episode titled The Knights of Tomorrow. The episode begins on Apocalypse, where the superhero known as The Question managed to break into Darkseid's command center and learn about his plan to attack Earth. However, one of Darkseid's minions locates him before he can send a message to Batman. He takes The Question to Darkseid's son, Kalibak, but the hero somehow manages to escape. Back on Earth, Batman single-handedly fights a last battle against the Joker, now that Dick Grayson had given up his role as Robin and had instead taken up his role as Nightwing. This episode also marks the Joker's death, as the supervillain falls to his death during a face-off with Batman. After getting rid of the Joker, Batman decides to settle down with Catwoman, aka Selina Kyle. The two get married, and Bruce Wayne eventually passes the mantle of Batman to Dick Grayson. Batman and Selina soon have a son named Damian Wayne, and Bruce decides to train him in case they ever need a new Batman in the future. Damien grows up in a healthy environment with Bruce and Selina, and gets trained in both combat as well as science. However, Damien doesn't like the fact that his father is trying to determine his entire future, and Selina even intervenes and advises Bruce to let Damien make his own future. The family attends the opening of the Batman Museum, where the Joker's son, J.J. Joker, makes an appearance and even causes an explosion. While Batman believes that J.J. Joker is only impersonating the Joker, the villain's son tries to attack Bruce, who struggles to defend himself due to his old age. While Selina comes to her husband's rescue, Bruce suggests that Damien should take care of the situation. While Damien is a little hesitant about fighting J.J. Joker, Bruce states that J.J. won't ruin Batman's legacy, while Dick Grayson arrives on the scene as Batman. J.J. sets off a series of explosions that cause the entire place to catch fire, while everyone rushes to safety. Selina and Bruce get trapped under the rubble, while Dick and Damien work together to rescue them. Dick ensures that Damien is safe before rescuing Bruce and Selina, but the building catches fire and explodes before he can save them. Damien gets orphaned at a young age, buries his parents, and heads to the Batcave to visit Dick. While Dick had been intent on tracing JJ down, Damien blames himself for his parents' death. Dick reassures him by saying that it's not his fault, and that he should believe in himself and keep training himself the way his father taught him. In the meantime, Dick locates JJ and corners him while he is scribbling graffiti on a Batman memorial statue. While Dick attacks him, JJ releases Joker gas and states that they want to destroy Batman's reputation and kill all civilians. In the meantime, Joker shows up at the scene to fight Dick, and he even knocks him out. JJ and Joker then tie him to the statue, while the Joker declares that he was alive all the time, and that he trained JJ to partake in his plan. The villain then declares that his exposure to Joker gas had a detrimental effect on his health, and that he only has a few months to live. The Joker declares that he will kill Dick before he dies, and end the legacy of Batman forever, while Dick retaliates by stating that Batman is an idea and can never die. While the Joker aims the gun at Dick, Damien arrives at the scene in a Robin costume. Dick orders to keep the Joker busy while he frees himself and get rid of the Joker gas. In the meantime, Damien turns his attention towards JJ and tells him that he was born to play this role while JJ is a fake villain. While Damien and JJ fight each other, the Joker realizes that Dick is trying to get rid of the gas and goes after him. He fires a blast at Dick, which causes him to fall to the ground while JJ asks the Joker to leave the scene. However, the Joker refuses to leave without killing Dick, while Damien defeats JJ. Eventually, the Joker once again releases the Joker gas into the environment, but Dick counters him by throwing a grenade and causes an explosion and kills the Joker once and for all. After dealing with the situation and avenging his parents' death, Damien chooses to work as Robin under Dick Grayson's wing. After Dick retires as Batman, Damien even picks up the mantle of the Dark Knight and keeps his father's legacy alive. After a few years, Damien trains his son to become Robin, and the two fight crime together. Selina Kyle, Alfred comments on how she will become a good wife in the future, and even titles his tale, The Knights of Tomorrow. While the episode was essentially a fictional story set in Alfred's imagination, it gave Damien Wayne an entirely new origin story, especially in terms of his parentage and his early life. Ah! Huh. 
What makes Damien so powerful? Damien had spent the initial years of his life under the eyes of the League of Assassins, where he had been trained to become a killer. While he initially learned to kill anybody who came in his path, he eventually stopped doing so and only resorted to killing if the situation demanded it. Nevertheless, he was quite a powerful opponent in any fight and even trained in various martial arts. He also considered himself to be light years ahead of all the other Robins in terms of their skills and training. And his initial training had indeed made him extremely powerful and proficient in various things. He had exceptionally enhanced hearing, and he could easily defeat his opponents without even looking at them, just by hearing the sounds of their movements. Due to this skill, he was the only Robin allowed to fight with a hood on, since he could win a fight without even seeing his opponents. Talia al Ghul was very protective of her son, and she had cloned various bodily organs just in case Damien ever lost an organ and needed a transplant. Damien was physically very strong, and at the same time, he also had a genius level intellect. He is a skilled detective, as well as a trained computer scientist. He had a short height, which also helped him to move around in stealth mode without being detected by his opponents. Damien also trained in acrobatics, and he could wield various weapons, ranging from katana swords, batarangs, or even brass knuckles. In certain story arcs, Damien also possessed the ability to heal from any wounds in an instant, and had a special regenerative healing factor. Moreover, he also gained more enhanced superpowers after coming back from the dead, but these powers depleted over a period of time. While Damien was trained to be a killer, he showed a lot of character development across his story arcs and learned to be a better fighter who fights crime without resorting to murder. Conclusion to sum it up, Damian Wayne was quite a powerful character whose story arcs were filled with action and adventure. While he did have his flaws, Damian grew up to become the son that Batman deserved and proved his worth by stepping up to fight crime on various occasions. What are your thoughts on Damian Wayne? Let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed our video, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. You are such an arrogant little brat. So entitled. So bloodthirsty.